a fabulous week. Our freshmen, I, I think I, I talked to two students for dress code violations and they were pulling their <laughs> pants up and cinching their belts as they were walking toward me. So, I mean, it's been a fabulous week. But one thing I wanted to do tonight is I wanted to dispel some rumors. And I appreciate the parent who called me with these rumors. I really do. So I'm going to dispel them tonight. One of the rumors was that we are no longer offering the same number of courses. That's true. We're actually offering two more courses than we were last year. The two new courses that we're offering, other than AP Biology, which took the place of AP Chemistry since Mr. Reminar retired. No, I couldn't find anyone to replace him this year of his caliber. So we'll talk about that in a minute. I do have a certified teacher in that position, but we're going to talk about the distance learning. So the two new classes we added, French 1 and Audio Visual, uh, an Audio Visual um, Film class. Film class. It is. <laughs> it's going to be a new completer program in Ms. Floro's uh, area. So we added two brand new classes. The other class, again, I said we added AP Biology, but it took the place of AP Chemistry. And I felt that was a good match for our school because every student graduating from college must have AP Biology. If they score a three, which our students' AP scores are off the charts. If they score a three, they will receive four hours of college credit in the state of Arkansas. If they don't score a three, they can always clip out. My daughter did that, clipped out, took the test, four hours credit that way for a $75 test. So if they score below a three, chances are they could still clip out. Now let's talk about the distance learning lab. And initially, I had wanted to offer two classes. I'm not trying to move the whole school to the distance learning lab. I was going to offer French. It's not feasible for us to hire another language teacher. And our students wanted French, so I'm offering French. The next class I was going to offer is journalism. With the departure of Bethany Jepson, there's no one in our school certified to teach journalism. So I'd already planned to offer journalism. Now, why did I decide to offer the other five classes? Miss Emery left, suddenly. Should I not offer those medical profession classes for our students who were counting on it? We're hoping that those could be completer courses for them? No. So I scrambled this summer at the last minute trying to find one of our centers across the state to take our students because they were already maxed out. And I did find someone to teach the anatomy, physiology, the introduction to the medical profession, and the medical terms and procedures. So those are three additional classes that I've offered. Now, let's talk about the two science classes. Why did I choose to offer them? Well, that's pretty much a no-brainer. The instructor who is teaching physics and chemistry is Dr. Joe Spradlin. He has a doctorate in, in uh, physics and chemistry, a doctorate. He teaches at the Math and Science School, which is one of the most prestigious schools in the state. So that was a no-brainer to offer that to our students versus someone who will be certified, is certified in life science, took the physical science test, waiting on the scores, was on the president's list six times. He could have taught it, but why not have him in there with the students, an additional resource, someone to offer more support, and Dr. Joe Spread. That makes more sense. Now our students cannot be anything but successful. So for those students, it's a little awkward for them. Let me explain the distance learning. It is, have you heard of Skype? All right, there is a video camera. They see the instructor. The instructor sees everyone in the class. I've been in there multiple times. Today, I was in the French class. She was calling on some of our students. She already knows all of their names. The lessons are sent 
through our distance learning facilitator. She prints them, hands them to the students. Any work that is done, she takes care of it, sends it back and forth to the instructor. There is constant interaction. We did have to adjust our bell schedule a little bit to fit. They are on an eight period a day. We are on a seven period a day. So we did adjust our bell schedule. So they would miss limited time out of any of their classes if they happened to take one that started five or six minutes early. So, let me see some other rumors. Um, trying to think. I just want to tell you that we are moving in the right direction with all of our schools. We have some of the best teachers in the state, and I've been all over the state. And I want to say that um, I am very fortunate and very blessed to be part of a school district that is proactive instead of constantly reactive. Uh, we're already working on Common Core. We're already doing the new teacher evaluation. It's not even going to be part of the high school for two years. We're on top of it. Everything we do, we're ahead of what the state is requiring. So I just want to thank my teachers, first of all, and I want to thank the school board for being so supportive of what we are doing at the high school. Since I'm the person who called you, um, um, thank you for getting them books. And um, my question is what happens if like the Skype doesn't work that day you know what something ha we have great technology people something happened in French it was off less than a minute it was right back on so if anything happens at all the distance learning facilitator is on the phone it is I mean she doesn't even have to call by the time Miss Hardwick called it was fixed she didn't even have time to go to the phone. They have, they are watching the class. It's not just our class, but the facilitators in every different area. We have one in uh, Hot Springs, one in Arkadelphia, and the other one is in Little Rock in Maumel. They have their own tech people that are sitting right there. And if anything happens, they're on top of it. So that hasn't happened this week? They haven't had any problems? The only problem we have had is we had in our French class, they changed instructors at the last minute, so it started up a little late. Okay, and what is this, um, in the physics class in particular, like you have two different classes, like one day one class learns and then the next day another class learns, or I mean every day all the kids in that class are learning. Absolutely, and I would welcome you to come and sit in. I would welcome any parent. Trying to come in, out. Come and sit in. I'll give you a, a visitor's pass. Come to the office and sit in tomorrow and view it. Anyone else? Yes. How are the kids reacting to the For the most part, they love it. For the most part, they love it. Yes, somebody is in there. Like a teacher or something like that. Right, so, right, it's in there. But the instructor can see everything going on in the class. Right. Everything. It would be interesting to see how they're going to say it midterm. Maybe just yes, no. Be great. And we can uh, reevaluate it semester. Right. But, oh, the other rumor we are not paying two salaries, we are paying the facilitator. I mean, not facilitating, we're not paying him. We're not paying, say for instance, with uh, Rocky Griffith, we're not paying him, and then we're paying Dr. Joe Spradlin another salary. We pay one fee for, it doesn't matter if we take, if we offer one class or seven classes. We pay one fee, and Mr. Carr, it's either 1500 or 2000 period, for however many we want to offer. It is cheap because I'm going to tell you, you know what he told me, Dr., um, not Dr. Spradlin, but um, <coughs> Dr. Harvey at the Math and Science School told me that last year they charged, 
I believe it was $250 a student, per student. And I said, I'm so glad you joined the consortium because they were not a part of the consortium last year. This is their first year. Yes. Okay. I'm not, I mean, this is new. And it is. It is new. And I have to disagree when you say that the kids love it. I haven't heard anyone in the junior class that is taking any of those classes love it. They don't. They hate it. Now that they have you say they, how many are you talking about? I'm well in junior class probably six, seven. You know, I don't know how many out of the junior class is taking. I think we need to give it more than three days. Well, I, and I agree, and I agree. Yeah. And my main problem was um, them not having a book, a textbook, and that's been taken care of. And I have to tell you, when we had the discussion, and I just got an email, I have a friend whose son is in that math and science school. Okay. And is taking chemistry and does have a textbook. Okay. So that, I mean, to me, when we had that conversation, that was something beyond my scope why I couldn't understand why they did not you have know a textbook. You know why? Because the instructor said they don't need a textbook. He said, I lecture. Whatever they need, we have physics and chemistry books. <coughs> that they signed out, they were welcome to at any time, but he lectures. If anything, it's going to prepare them for college. Now, all the other classes have textbooks because their instructor required textbooks. We ordered the textbooks. I, I'm not disputing so, that fact, and I'm agreeing. We do need to get it more If time. he said we needed textbooks, we'd order textbooks. This is not new technology. This has been around for at least 15 years. And I'm not we're finally, we're finally smart enough to use it, I think. Well, well I think being yeah. more geared yeah. so for that would have been a better thing to do, to make well, sure. I'm sorry. What would have been a better thing? To be more prepared. I mean, like the no pair, like the like textbooks or if he had said we needed textbooks which they all gave us a list of textbooks they needed we would have ordered textbooks but he said i lecture and that kind of goes hand in hand with what mr stanger was just saying you know, so the you best teachers don't need textbooks. we don't we don't need to be textbook driven that's the problem going turn to page one now turn to page two now and turn to page three we don't need to be textbook driven. But then you're, <laughs> you're depending on notes, uh, and there may be someone who is not a good note taker. And if he's not, he can get notes from learn. another They gotta learn. Let's move, let's move on. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Uh, just yes. A little bit. I, I just like to recommend that the board next time, if you wanna know students like something, that you invite the students, not particular ones, but an open invitation, ask them not. Somebody else. I, I have heard positive. Just no, I'm just saying. We may do that, but after three days, I don't think that they know. I know. They don't know what they know. Maybe the maybe ones they I've talked to said okay. they like it. I, I'm, I mean, like maybe the next board meeting, put out an open invitation to have them come here to, to say. It would be a good idea to ask them. Uh, the other question is, are, what is the history of this? You said it's been around a long time. Are there other schools that we know of that are using it? What's there? Yes, many schools use it. Many, around here? Many, um, around here, like, yes. For example? Uh, Valley Springs, Springs, Terra Valley Springs, uh, let's see, Flippin, Bergman. A lot of schools use it. And we've used it in the past. We're just using it more now. What have we used it for? And it works very well. Okay, thank you.